tomorrow, Richard has decided that he wants to try a diet. And as he's describing it to me, I laugh. I'm like, oh yeah, it's cabbage soup diet. He's like, no, that's not what this is. It's cabbage soup diet. I'm like, all right, awesome. Like, you're not gassy enough. Let's eat a bunch of fucking cabbage soup. I absolutely hate this diet. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It is. I'm gonna die. You haven't had enough calories. That's why you feel like shit today. <coughs> I don't want it. I'm done. <clears throat> so yeah, that cabbage soup diet. That'll be that'll be fun. Um, yeah. See how that goes. Only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. That's how Warren Buffett explained what happens when the economy, the tide, retracts and all of the over-leveraged investors are suddenly unable to meet their margins. They're swimming naked, caught with their pants down as the saying goes. Because in times of plenty, bad deeds can go undetected. And it's not just the dirty deeds of reckless billionaire hedge fund managers. We all fall short in one aspect of our lives or another. And so we're all susceptible to humility when, inevitably, the tide rolls out. Men who had for years juggled multiple families under the guise of traveling for business were found to be stark naked when the world locked down in the spring of 2020. Coincidentally, that's when I got caught with my pants down as well, literally. Not because I was skinny dipping. In fact, there was nothing skinny about my situation. I couldn't pull my pants up because they were too small, or rather, I had gotten too big. After two months of suddenly being sedentary for the first time in my life and eating my feelings, I could no longer fit into any of my pants. Ugh. These aren't my sons or anything like that. These are my pants. I bought them to wear myself. And this is how they fit now. Oh. Yeah, so that's why we're doing this. I've just been giving you my hair ties to use to <laughs> make sure you could still button. I mean, I'm, I've picked up weight too, not just because of the quarantine. My weight has fluctuated my entire life. I come from what some would call hardy stock. I, my family's huge. Like, I don't think all of my siblings can be in an elevator at one time. <laughs> so I think it's good for both of us to do this. <laughs> no doubt. The past two months I haven't, I haven't been working. Yeah. So I haven't even been getting the nominal amount of exercise that I used yeah. to get. Besides not working, we're also not riding bikes every day like we used to because we can't. We, the bike path <laughs> is just so congested because apparently nobody knew this bike path existed before, <laughs> before they were forced to stay at home. And now people are like, oh my God, there's a bike path running yeah. through my backyard. I never noticed it before. I took it for granted that we could just hop on our bikes and go from one end of town to the other. And I mean, we could go for a 20 mile bike ride and only have to cross a couple streets and only have to, you know, deal with a couple people, maybe a few mountain bikers and a couple people walking dogs and stuff. But now it's. Well, the problem is these crazy. people get together with all the neighbors and they go for this long walk with, with neighbors. a dozen people. Yeah. And so when you get to the gates, it bottlenecks and you have to try and get it past all these people. It's madness. Apparently YouTube is wise to all this and they're showing me <laughs> weight loss videos. I clicked on one because it said how to lose 15 pounds in seven days. I'm dubious. I, I can't imagine losing two pounds a day. It's not healthy. More than two pounds a either. day. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't sound I mean, healthy. But the soup does sound good. So we're going to make it mm -hmm. and we're going to do the whole diet, seven day diet. So are you ready for this? Yeah, let's go shopping. Let's go shopping. I've always enjoyed the grocery store, ever since I was a little kid. 
I don't know exactly what it is about a supermarket, but there's something comforting there. In the summertime, it feels nice to walk into the cool store and escape the heat outside. In the fall, it's filled with seasonal smells and foods that you might not buy again until next year, like those crispy onions you put on a green bean casserole, and candy and other goodies that you can buy year-round, but in the fall they dress up for the holidays to bully you into buying them with fear of missing out on the special limited edition packaging. Black and orange through October, brown and orange through November, and then in December everything goes red and green. Then. Just after the silver, black, and gold New Year's decorations go on clearance, everything becomes pink and red a month too soon. It's like clockwork. You can rely on it. I suppose that's what's comforting. The routine. Maybe it won't fit. I need a magnum bag. As a kid, I enjoyed that routine. Every week, we'd park, get a cart, go inside, walk down the same aisles, and pick out the same foods. Sandwich bread, bologna, pudding pops, cereal. Always meandering through the same loop around the store, we'd grab a sample if they had them, and then check out. At almost every single register was a familiar face. Each cashier had the number of years they had worked for the store printed on their name tag, and I always looked to see how many years they had been working there. Anything over five years was unfathomable to my young mind. As I grew up, the same faces were still at the registers. The numbers on their name tags were getting big, their hair was getting a little grayer, and their faces were beginning to betray their age. They were a lot like teachers when I was young. I wondered who they were, what else they did, if anything, or did they just live at the store? I never saw any of them outside the store. Come to think of it, I never see them outside the store now, either. It seems elitist and wrong. It's an indictment of suburban homogeny, distilling our neighborhoods into socioeconomically segregated islands the help can't afford to live on. And so interactions with people above or below your own social status are limited to business transactions like checking out at the supermarket. What do you think? I like them. Yeah? Oh, how am I supposed to pick out a cantaloupe with a mask on? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you can smell a fart through these things, you should be able to smell a cantaloupe. Mm. All I can think of is a wiggle song. Can you know? Can you guess what? Fruit salad. <laughs> yummy, yummy. After checking out one time when I was about seven, I was pushing the cart as we were walking away from the check stand and I ran over the back of my mom's heel with the front of the cart. Not on purpose, but because I had the spatial awareness and attention span of a seven-year-old. She turned around and smacked me across the face in front of a dozen or so totally unfazed customers and cashiers. And yet, after that totally unfair and unjustified moment of public humiliation, the grocery store remains a fixture in my mind of good memories and warm fuzzies that come and go with the seasons. Every week, every month, every season, every year, the grocery store is there. The routine is there. And it's a very privileged routine, isn't it? It's a sign that you have a minimum level of wealth and status, but whoever stops to think about that? When the shelves were bare in March, April, and May, I didn't hear anybody saying that they were grateful that the stores were still open and that they were able to continue to buy food to feed their families. They just complained about what wasn't on the shelves. Nobody had to resort to hunting the neighborhood squirrels. Even in an unprecedented time of crisis, the grocery store was still there for us in a significant way. Sure, our routine was interrupted, but it wasn't lost. It was temporarily altered. We couldn't buy all of the things we are used to buying, and that can be a stressful thing when we rely on our routines of consumption to comfort and soothe our troubled minds. It forces us out of our comfort zone when we have to make even a small change to our routine. That's why diets don't work. They replace the most fundamental routine of our day with new foods that don't work to comfort us. Then, when tensions rise, we retreat back to our old ways. Routine one, diet zero. Bouillon, cabbage, celery, peppers, onions, garlic, uh, one large can of stewed or whole tomatoes. What size? A large can. A large can? A large can. Henry David Thoreau warned us to beware of all enterprises that require new clothes. I say beware of all diets that require new food. Not that I have anything against trying new things. But temporarily changing the food you eat will not change you. I've cut things out of my diet for extended periods of time before. Sugar, alcohol, dairy. But it's never for very long. They always come back. Because, like Jerry Seinfeld said, a diet is what you eat, not something you do. We all know the meat and potatoes guy who wouldn't be caught dead eating a vegetable lest anyone think he was less than a man. He's not on the manly meat and potatoes diet. 
He just has a limited palate. And everyone knows a vegan who would never eat any animal products, but that's considered a lifestyle, not a diet. I would never eat that fermented shark they consider a delicacy in Iceland, but you wouldn't say I'm on the no rotten shark diet. I just don't eat foods that are based on dares. I even know someone who claims that they can't eat a salad because of a GI disorder, but they drink Dr. Pepper by the gallon. Are they on the Dr. Pepper diet? No, they just have a touch of Munchausen. A diet is what you eat, not something you do. And at least in Western society, what we eat has somehow become entangled with our identity. We cling dogmatically to our diet, sometimes to the detriment of our own health. Which is why the only diet that works, the only diet that will actually stick, is to make a complete lifestyle change. I didn't know it while we were following the path we've spent the past 20 years wearing into the floor of our local grocery store, but that's exactly what I was about to do. So the first thing it says we need to do is uh, dump all this stuff into a large pot. Into a large Dutch oven or stock pot, add one large can, large <laughs> can. This is what I, yes, I would I call a large can of tomatoes. But apparently after I went back and watched the, the video, uh, he was referring to what I would consider to be a medium sized can of tomatoes. Yeah. I had assumed it was the medium can size but you had said the large he, so it said large i was I, reading i, know, I was I reading know. the instructions i was reading the recipe it said large can of stewed tomatoes but typically if you were to go to a grocery store the large can in a grocery store is the medium can we just shop at like a bulk store we're supposed to put this in our stock pot we're using a stock pot not a dutch oven because that's what we have, number one. And number two, he couldn't get all of his stuff in the Dutch oven. Yeah. And there's going to be enough Dutch ovening Yeah. when we start eating <laughs> this that we don't need to bring any more Dutch we ovens have, into this. We don't need a Dutch oven in the kitchen in the bedroom. I'm going to start with that. Okay. And then uh, I guess you start chopping stuff? Yeah. Hot. It says, uh, add one packet of onion soup mix. Add three to four cups of water along with six to seven beef bouillon cubes. first? Yeah. You gonna tell me what you wear? No. Oh, that's so mean! 
much do you weigh? You'll have to watch the video like everybody else. That's not fair. Because you're going to edit and you're going to see what I weigh. <laughs> 208.8. Oh, baby. I weighed more than that when I had Caden. <laughs> no. That's so sad. <laughs> How much is it? 172. When do we get to eat? Um, <laughs> not for like an hour. And you still have an apple to eat. Oh, that's right. I got to go finish my apple. Yeah. So the way the diet's supposed to go is on the first day, we can eat as much of the soup as we want, but we can also eat as much of these fruits as we want at each meal. Apples, oranges, tangerines, satsumas, I don't even know what that is. They're a little orange. Oh. It's like a little... <laughs> like a cutie? Well, it's, I think it's more in like the tangelo tangerine family, but mm. yeah. Cantaloupes, watermelons, pears, plums, peaches, papayas, and pumpkin. I wonder if you put that alliteration in there on purpose. Maybe. Oh, I right. love alliteration. I don't think he's going to be able to make it through the diet. He had a banana and apple for breakfast. He's going to be starving. He's going to be hangry. He's going to be a bear. We've been on this diet now for about five hours. I've eaten an, an apple and um, a second apple that I'm eating now and two bananas. I just want to go out. I want to get cheese and bread <laughs> and wine and it's gonna be a really, really long, long, long week. Long week. We've been at this for like five hours. Not very long, maybe six hours. Um, and I've had just fruit today. The only thing I'm sad about is my coffee. Not having coffee. Soup is cooking, so that should be ready soon. Not really hungry. Um, I did steal a piece of Richard's apple and he said I was stealing food from his mouth. Literally stealing food from his mouth. You ready? Yeah, you want to try it? Sure. Yeah. Right. Looks like it's probably... Uh, hmm. Probably could go a couple more minutes. Maybe another 20 or so. Well, let's try it. Just in case. Doesn't smell as good. It smells very it smells like, bland. It smells like V8. Yeah. All right, dearest. All right. Let's give it a taste. Oh, hot. Yeah. Very, very hot. Is it as hot as a pizza bagel? Oh. <laughs> Fuck. That was so gross. Maybe let it cool a second? Nope, going back in, huh? Good stuff? Tastes like a bland soup. Yeah. Pepper plant. Mmm. That's good stuff. Oh my god. Just a freaking pepper plant in here. It's like... Mm, with all those other flavors. Yeah. When it cools. Yeah. You know, It'll it's... probably be really good mm -hmm. tomorrow. Yeah, this is exactly... Exactly what I needed. All that fruit today, I needed some real food. And this is a gonna hit the spot. I've had two bowls of the soup now. But what I want is pizza, cookies, and wine. I still have wine, which is better than fruit. Wine is a superior version of fruit. True facts. End of day one. Good ain't no thing. Easy. I love fruit. I love water. I love tea. Still pretty sad about the no coffee thing though. I'm not really hungry. I'm not gassy. Can't say the same for Richard. But yeah, first day. Easy. One day down, six days to go. The second day though, you swap out the fruit for vegetables. The soup and a baked potato, okay? Yeah. But then as many of the vegetables as you want. Asparagus, bean sprouts, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, collards, cucumber, celery, eggplant, green beans, mushrooms, okra, peppers, radishes, spinach, tomatoes, and zucchini. So you're just supposed to eat the potato just dry. It says eat as much of the listed vegetables as you want, plus soup, plus a baked potato. I'm throwing my potato in the soup. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Just says eat it. It doesn't say how you get it in you. Yeah. Day two. Woke up tired. Not sure it had anything related to with the soup or the diet. Didn't sleep really well. Already regretting 
the diet. It's only been 24 hours. It's not that the soup is bad or anything, but yesterday was particularly awful because I'm not a fruit eater. I tried a peach yesterday. It was slimy and disgusting. I tried watermelon. Ugh. I don't know where Jolly Rancher gets their watermelon flavor from, but it sure as hell is not from a watermelon. Maybe if they made watermelons to taste like Jolly Ranchers, I might eat them. But the, the hard part, especially last night, was uh, after dinner. I just wanted cookies and I wanted wine. That's gonna be the hardest part, is uh, detoxing from all of the crap that I'm used to eating until those cravings stop. Yesterday was easy, nothing to it. Fruit's my jam. I'm making soup for breakfast. We're gonna add a potato to it and some broccoli since it's a veggie day. I want coffee, first and foremost, because that's usually how I start my day. But tea will have to suffice, I think. Another five days of this will be a breeze. Nothing I haven't done before. I'm at 204.4. Four point four pounds in twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. I hate you. <laughs> That's mean. You know it's not true. I still love you. Even though I'm still a fatty, mm -hmm. and you're becoming svelte. Mm -hmm. All right. I was at an even one sixty eight. You're what about ten pounds? Four pounds, just like you. Oh. <laughs> then why do you hate me? <laughs> it was a joke. Huh? It was a joke. Totally good. You're saying I hate you. I don't hate you. You know I don't hate yeah, you. Yeah, but you're not the same amount of weight as me. No, but you ate so much more soup than I did yesterday. Mm. Think you can eat this for another five days? I'm totally used to eating the same thing every single day. I know, and I'm not. <laughs> but I'm not used to eating the same thing <clears throat> all day. Yeah, three <laughs> Every different single meals. day. Just think tonight you can have broccoli with a little Parmesan. Mm. That'll be good. Yep. <clears throat> Maybe a little cheese sauce. No. Uh, <laughs> that's not this diet? No. Did I tell you my mom used to make stuff that was called snow for the broccoli? Mm-hmm. It was like Parmesan mm -mm. and cocaine and... No, so much worse. I was fat kid. And there are so many factors as why I was a fat kid. <laughs> White vinegar. Sugar. And mayonnaise. Her mayonnaise. What was with her, her era? Her diet. But mayonnaise was a mayonnaise was a big thing in her time. Like, in her age group growing up, I don't know a single person that doesn't like mayonnaise from her age group. Oh, it's like that whole Look thing at, about Miracle Whip. Yeah. Being billed as a salad dressing. Could you imagine coating a salad in mayonnaise? Yeah, that's uh, potato salad, macaroni salad. All my sister's favorite salads. Today's been kind of a weird day. I've been kind of active today, not like exercising or anything like that, but just been doing a lot of stuff around the house, yard work and stuff like that. And God, by about one o'clock, I just started, I don't know. I wouldn't say I was crashing. I just felt bad. Just my stomach sort of felt, I don't know, a little queasy, sort of. Just didn't feel good. Wasn't hungry. Definitely wasn't hungry, but didn't feel good. It is. Our it is close to the end of day two, and we've locked Richard outside because <laughs> he's a hangry monster. He's not gonna die, I promise. I'm gonna die. And I got to thinking that I was just, you know, I just didn't have enough calories. I was just burning more than I had taken in. And so we ate again. Don't go to mine? No. Full. And I felt felt a lot better after that. So I think uh, just got to eat more often. You know, smaller meals more often, I guess. Hey, baby. Hmm. This is the Bob Ross of soup. Oh. 
happy little tree. At least someone's happy. <laughs> I don't understand why you're so miserable. This was your idea. It sucks. <laughs> All diets suck. That's why I've never done one. How long did we last? The other one was what? Oh, when we tried to cut out sugar and carbs. It was like three days, right? My wife and I are doing a uh, no sugar, no carb five day challenge, um, which basically means I'm starving to death. Uh, haven't been this hungry in uh, a long time. Got to eat like every hour, otherwise I, I want to pass out. So yeah, good times. And you were grumpy. Oh. So grumpy. Excuse me? Just like right now. You're grumpy. I absolutely hate this diet. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I'm just craving sugar and just any anything. Anything other than vegetables. I'd even I would go for I would go for a banana right now. I would, but I can't because it's not tomorrow or yesterday. I am anti any diet, any any meal plan that doesn't allow you to have fucking fruit when you want it. I eat fruit every day. I eat veggies every day. So going today without fruit, I wanted nothing more than like a really juicy blood orange or a cara cara orange or like oh, a pear. That would have been fantastic. I don't know. The, the lack of variety, I think, is the hardest thing. Um, I'd like a glass of wine. Don't have to have it. Not super craving it. I'm not nearly as miserable as my partner in crime. I think I think you definitely consume more carbs and sugar in the day than I do. Which is why you're having a harder time than I am. I I feel bad that Richard hates us so much. But it was his idea and we're going to do it. 7 days. It's not a big deal. End of day two. I woke up this morning feeling really good. Really good. I was thinking about the day. It's going to be a beautiful day today. It's a Sunday, my favorite day. And then I remembered that I'm doing this fucking diet. And that killed the good vibes. The third day is basically the first two days combined. Eat as much of the vegetables and the fruit as you want, plus the soup. I don't want it! I want to eat her. Why are we doing this to ourselves? I, it was your idea. Yeah, it was my idea, but like, why are we still doing it? Because we gotta finish. We're not clears. Four more days. <sighs> You know why it's so much worse? Because because of this whole stay at home thing. Yeah, we can't go bike ride. We can't do any. Nothing brings us joy. Right, and so there's nothing to look forward to, which no. is how we got into this situation to begin with. Yeah. Because the only thing there was to look forward to was eating and drinking. There's nothing to look forward to except Friday. Like, that's the yeah. only thing to look forward to. You. You'll be fine. I won't be fine. Just remember. I'm never going to be fine again. <laughs> this is all you're doing. And be happy that you have a supportive wife that's willing to do this with you. If you want seconds, there's there's more than seconds. Yeah, I'll be good. Are you sure? I'll have a banana if I'm hungry later. I haven't had a banana today. Cheers. Cheers. Yesterday was uneventful. Except for the fact that somebody is super, super, super grumpy. How do you feel about the cabbage soup diet, baby? I hate it! Hey, baby. Whose idea was it? Yours. All bad ideas are yours. Today's a fruit and veggie day, so I'm enjoying a giant bowl of watermelon. I'm super excited about it. Yesterday, um... I'm starving to death. 
Richard's not starving to death. He's already had an apple and a banana. Um, and I'm hungry again. And he's hungry again. Mindy Kaley, a while back, had a book, and in it she talks about the whole concept of like women kind of diet as like a hobby. So like we know all the diets and all the effects and everything. And so it's hilarious that he just jumped right into like cabbage soup day one. So that's fun. I'm sorry he's miserable, but it does kind of amuse me from here. It's really true what all the uh, experts say about diet, exercise, and all that sort of stuff. You know, maintaining a healthy weight, maintaining any weight is all about Lifestyle choice. My lifestyle when I fit into my pants was very active, very physical job, moving every day, constantly moving, you know, 10,000 steps or more every single day. As soon as the stay at home order happened, all that stopped. I stopped moving, started eating a lot more, and I couldn't fit into my pants anymore. There's no reason to do this. I just need to move more, exercise more. I think I'd be a lot happier doing that. Yeah. What do we got here? All right, so this is the extent of our entertainment. Taste testing apples that I've, we've never had before. Um, we used to do that with apple ciders. Yeah. Back in the before times. This would be better if it was boozy. Um, okay, so this is Envy and this is a Opal. Mm, I've had an Envy before. Have you had Envy before? Yeah, Envy's, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Envy uh, cut kind of like it had a crispness, like a Fuji. I'm gonna try the opal. The opal looks Tastes sweet. Tastes like a Fuji. Oh. Cheers. Cheers. You know what would be really good with this? Mm. Peanut butter. I miss peanut butter. Mm. Remember in Washington when we'd go to Fred Meyer and they had that machine mm. that would you put peanuts in it and it would crush up your own peanut butter? Your own peanut butter. And it was it so good. It was so good, but it was like, you take a bite of it, and the old fashioned like cartoons where they make fun of peanut butter and your mouth sticking together, that's what it was. It was so thick and so... I don't remember the cartoon, but I remember the peanut butter. Mm, it was good. I think that's probably what I used to make Caden's first PB&J. <laughs> It is the end of day three. I am sick of cabbage soup. The flavor's fine. It's just, I'm over it. I'm done. I added a ton of broccoli, a ton of green beans to it tonight, and that helps. I made this, which is quite yummy. Frozen watermelon, zero calorie bubbly water, um, a little bit of orange juice, and it's fantastic. And it's still on this thing we're doing. I'm not really hungry. I'm down weight. Didn't have a headache today. Uh, no real stomach crampings or anything. So, like, I'm good. I just don't want to eat cabbage soup anymore. Fourth day. Throughout the day, eat eight bananas and drink eight glasses of skimmed milk. Feel free to cut up some of the bananas, place into a blender with some sugar substitute and some of the milk to make a nice shake. That's not a nice shake. You know what a nice shake is? A half gallon of Tillamook vanilla ice cream, <laughs> Hershey syrup, and rum. That is a nice shake. This sounds like a god awful shake. Okay, but the, your nice shake is the reason that we have to do this because you don't have <laughs> pants that fit. So. We are out of bananas. Nobody can deliver bananas. So I just rode my bike and got bananas and eggs. Your brother is extra miserable today because it's the banana skin milk day and I've got a veggie like protein shake meal replacement shake um, that I'm able to use a percentage of the scoop to get it as close to skim milk calories as possible. It's chocolate flavor, it's plant-based, slightly chalky, but like the best texture and flavor of any protein shake I've had. Alright, baby, try it. No. Please, just try a step. No. Why are you such a big baby? 
I'm doing this diet with you. You can try this smoothie. Oh. Please just try a sip. No. Oh, God. It looks Smell disgusting. It. Just try a sip. <coughs> I'll never smell the protein drink. You just drink it. It tastes fine. You never smell it. Yeah, these are rookie mistakes. He's such a big baby. This is actually really tasty. Oh, my God. I could do eight of these today. Take a sip. Take Absolutely not. Take a, tr just try it. Seriously, just try it. You need to be on film trying it. Go. Just try it. I can't even get past the smell. Then use a straw. How is that? Because you don't have to have your nose as close. I can smell it from here. Just try it. Stop being a baby. Just try the smoothie. Everybody can see you drinking it. I think it's fine. It's fucking disgusting. It is not. It's way better than skim milk. What are you going to do to replace oh, these calories? Oh, what a high bar. What are you going to do to replace the calories? I'm not. You have to. Eight glasses at 85 calories. It's 680 calories that you have to replace. What are you going to do? Wait till tomorrow. You can't starve yourself all day. This won't I'm work. Done. This is trying to get your metabolism going. I'm not going to drink that. No. It's disgusting. <laughs> no. I think it's tasty. You're wrong. You really thought it was gross. You also think calamari is tasty. Oh, calamari is so good. And what are the, some of the other and disgusting shrimp. things that you like to eat? Rice cakes. Oh my god, rice cakes are so good. See, you have no taste. Did you really think it tasted good? Yeah, I really think it's disgusting. Oh, that's bad. Absolutely disgusting. But like I said, you don't have any taste. You like disgusting foods, and you don't like chocolate. Uh, this is chocolate. You don't. You always say you don't like chocolate. I'm no, not I don't big, like chocolate. I'm not a I big fan like of chocolate. chocolate. I'm not. But when it comes to like protein shakes. The vanilla is just straight up chalk. I can't do, I can't do vanilla protein uh, shakes. As soon as this is over, you're gonna get a vanilla shake. I'm going to in and out, and I'm getting a vanilla shake. And fries? No, just a vanilla shake. Can we ride and our bikes there? And maybe some fries. <laughs> Can we ride our bikes there? Of course. Okay. I'm down for that. Can I have a couple fries? Why not? Yeah, you don't like fries. You I do, do like you fries. You like shakes and watermelon and Oh, watermelon peaches. is so good. Don't be mean. The only fruit I can have today is, is stupid bananas. I'm not a big fan of bananas. Tomorrow you get to eat all the tomatoes you want. I love tomatoes. That's a fruit. But the meat, I don't know how we're going to do that. That's a lot of meat. It's going to be so much better than eating that fucking soup by itself. Still have to eat the soup though. Oh, with chunks of chicken in it. And then chicken will be good. You're gonna do pork chops for you too. Mm -hmm. It's a lean meat. Mm -hmm. You just want me to do chicken then? Mm -hmm. No pork? pork. It's fine. I don't know. Will you eat a At smoothie? This point. Nope. <laughs> I think you won't eat whatever. Oh whatever. god, you're fucking <laughs> crap. Jesus, you did that on purpose. I did. Richard's not drinking any milk. He won't drink the shakes. He won't do anything. So he's sitting there on his third banana and that sounds dirty. He's still chugging through. I totally thought he'd give up by now. Back to my chocolate banana espresso smoothie. It doesn't taste bad. Your brother's a dork. Yeah, so is there an exercise part with this diet? Cause now it's getting like bodybuilding elements. What's the fascinating thing about it? How it's like taking elements from every diet and just Frankensteining them together into a sort of monstrosity. This diet, they say nothing about exercising. I can't imagine that it would be healthy to exercise with the small amount of calories that is being consumed. I'm really shocked Richard's sticking with this. He hasn't lost a shit yet today. 
He's eating like five bananas and a salad. The important thing is I'm having a great time hearing about it. It's fun for me. I'm amused. I don't know if you've ever done this diet, but I mean, it's, it's easy. There's nothing to it. And as amused as you are, I am a million times more amused because he's complaining so much. He is 100% miserable and I think it's hysterical. I'm glad you guys are entertained though because I'm super entertained. As of right now, we're at the halfway point of this godforsaken diet. Bonnie says it's not as bad as I'm making it out to be, but it really is. Um, and it's not, it's not about the food. You know, the cabbage soup is, is okay. It's not terrible. The fruit, the vegetables, whatever. The problem is this diet has illuminated what I eat through the course of a week. What I eat through the course of a day is so habitual. You know, I've suddenly realized that I eat when I'm bored. I eat when I'm bummed. I eat when I'm stressed. I eat to cope. And it's amazing how strong habits are. And I've done things like this before. I cut sugar and alcohol out of my life for nine and a half months. And again, it was it was a mental aspect to that that got me. It was uh, the, the habits. We'd go on a bike ride. We'd always ride our bikes to 7-Eleven, get a treat, and ride back home. But it was hard going on those bike rides to 7-Eleven and not getting anything and riding back home. It's like, where's the fun? What's, what's the point of living? <laughs> what am I doing? And of course, I, I, I realized there was the habit. That was no shock. The shock was how strong the urge to continue those habits is. So it is 5.36 on day four, and I have four bananas left. I uh, was just asked by my loving husband, how are you gonna eat those four bananas? What are you gonna do with them? Well, I asked, how are you gonna eat those four bananas? It's 5.30. I know. How are you gonna eat four bananas before you go to bed? And you're not gonna wanna eat right before you go to bed. See, if you had been planning like me, you would have been eating them every couple hours. I have been. I've eaten, I've had a banana and a smoothie every couple hours. Why weren't you putting two bananas in there? That's the whole point of the smoothie. Throw two bananas in there? That's not the whole point. That's not what it said to do. You could have thrown all eight bananas I in could the have. first smoothie. Maybe my next smoothie will have the last four bananas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really a banana fan, and I think after this, this fourth smoothie, this fourth banana, I think there might be an issue with bananas because my tongue feels weird and the roof of my mouth feels weird. Well, so that's really a thing. I think I may be allergic to bananas. Anyways, his recommendation to get the rest of the four bananas in was just to make banana bread. Working on my uh, seventh banana. That's a lot of bananas. I don't know how people do that 30 bad diet. I mean, I know they blend them up and drink them and shit, but. 30 bananas, that's a lot of bananas. Just, just the logistics of getting 30 bananas into your house and then into your body is just mind bottling. It's been really hard to focus the last two days. Day three and day four, really hard to focus. I mean, yesterday I wasn't really trying to focus, so you, you can sort of discount that. But today, today I've been trying to focus with no success, but we're on the, uh, we're over the hump. We're on the home stretch. Day five, <laughs> I love this. Eat as many tomatoes as you want. That's so weird, that's so random. Just tomatoes? Tomatoes. Are there veggies? It's, oh, okay, so tomatoes. No, eat as many tomatoes as you want. Okay. One and a half pounds of meat, plus the soup. Beef, pork, chicken, or fish. Now, I can actually see here, one and a half pounds of meat and as many tomatoes as you want. Yeah. You got sloppy joes right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're halfway to sloppy joes. <laughs> no. No? Oh, is this part of the diet? Yeah. Yeah. Is that? That's yours. 
You know how I know that's yours? It's not mine. That's totally yours. Is there pink to it? A little bit, yeah. No, there's not. Yeah, there is. And there's no dark root. That's yours. Not mine. I can't even tell you how excited I am. To not eat cabbage? This is the first normal food I've had in five days. Cheers. Cheers. So do you hate this diet as much today? No, oh, it's all right today. <clears throat> Yesterday, the hardest part for me was um, the last two bananas. The roof of my mouth still feels funny. I don't think I should have consumed five bananas. I didn't even make it to eight. I only made it to five because my mouth started itching. The last two. Were hard to choke down. I could have lived with. No, they weren't hard to choke down. I just I could have lived without them. And I was buzzing, I think, from all the sugar. It was a lot of sugar. I and only it sugar. That's all I had. Yeah. To eat. I ate 112 grams of sugar yesterday. Oh my god. What is the daily recommended value? What? It's like 23 grams. Yeah. Three more days after this. So four more days. No, oh, Jesus. Two. Four more days. Today's three. Uh, We're on. Uh, oh, yeah. Two more days after this. Two more days after this. Yeah. Three more days, We're including on day today. Five. Wow. You did it, baby. It You're feels so close. like it's never going to end still. You're so close. I totally didn't think you'd <coughs> stick with this. Why? What do I not stick with? No, because it's hard. Oh, so it's I don't stick with things that are hard? Because you enjoy your food. There are very few things in life that really, truly bring you joy, and food does that. That's no joke. I know. That's no joke. That's, that's why I'm saying I'm real. having a hard time. I, I didn't think you would stick with it because it is so restrictive. This morning, I think, like, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. It's, I, I'm, I'm finished, but I'm going to still do it because we have all day today and then two more days. Um, and the only reason I'm done is because I'm not losing weight. This morning, I weighed exactly what I weighed yesterday. And that's just me being pissy and going, well, it's not working, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> I'm not going to. We'll stick it out. Today's been the most normal that I've felt from the beginning of this. Woke up at a quarter to six this morning. Just wide awake. I don't know what that's about. I didn't go to bed until midnight. Two more days. Two more days. Look at all that goddamn meat. I think I'm going to cut one of my, um, one of my meat meals. Cause I just, it doesn't make sense. Like there, why, this is not a one size fits all. Richard's bigger than I am. He got more muscle mass than I do. Like he should be eating more than me. It is 4.22. I am two six ounce servings into this meat today and I am so full like I don't want to eat anymore I knew the meat days would be the hardest days um, I still have two six ounce servings of meat left to go and I just don't even know like it's not that it's not appetizing I added the meat to my cabbage soup I just I'm just full all of the burnt blood in my body has left my brain and is trying to digest this ball of animal in my gut. I cannot, for the life of me, figure out a simple mathematical equation to make two fucking quilts. I'm going crazy. I hate this diet, Sarah. It's all fun and games when I got to eat fruit and veggies every day. But now I'm just as miserable as Richard was yesterday and he's totally fine. Like totally fine. You know what he's doing right now? Barbecuing. Pork chops. <sighs> For fuck's sake. Day six, you go back to the vegetables, eat as much as you want plus another pound and a half of meat. That's two days of meat. Plus right? the soup. A pound, three pounds of meat in a day, in two days. Yeah, that's a lot. Good morning, it's the morning of day six. Um, I feel better than I did yesterday. Uh, my stomach doesn't hurt as much, so that's good. I'm down a whole five ounces, Woohoo! Richard's down like a pound and a half. 
boys. They're dumb. The first four days were a breeze. Yesterday was hard. It was a lot of meat and I'm just not a carnivore. My stomach was upset and I couldn't even get in all six servings of meat. Yesterday I was trying to figure out uh, just a simple mathematic equation and create a pattern for a quilt, which normally would take me like 10, 15 minutes. Um, it was like an hour and a half in and I just gave up because I could not, I couldn't focus. I was like in this brain fog um, and I just felt like crap. Oh, I'm ready for this diet to be over. I mean, we're just phoning it in at this point anyway. We ran out of cabbage soup yesterday, so it's not really the cabbage soup diet anymore. I am feeling better than I've felt in a long, long time. Just one more day. Just not hungry. <laughs> Having detoxed from sugar and carbs and alcohol, mm -hmm. I feel better than I have felt since 2016. Huh? Which was the last time I detoxed, detoxed from, from sugar and alcohol and not carbs though. No, you've never gone full carbs, no carbs. I mean, you're still getting carbs. You never go full carb. <sighs> Definitely about the same amount of carbs as you do, because I love bread. And I eat a lot of fruit. But I don't think I eat the refined sugar that you do. You do. Really? And when, when we get ice cream, you eat ice cream. As much as you do? When we have banana bread, you eat banana bread. A piece of banana bread out of the entire loaf, usually. Or the entire two loaves. You helped him with that bag of Oreos. I did. I had three Oreos out of an entire bag. I used to crave sugar constantly. I used to, those little Debbie cakes, those snack cakes, I would get those and eat the entire box. It's fucking tasty. I wasn't like, oh, I really need this sugar. It's like, I feel like shit. I wanna feel better. I'm gonna eat a box of little Debbie cakes. I remember in junior high, I started buying little Debbie fudge brownies and New York seltzer root beer. I know I was buying two at a time, but I may have been buying four at a time of the fudge brownies and the root beer. Not one root beer and four fudge brownies. And that would be my lunch every day. You need Jesus. <laughs> That's bad. No, what I needed was a parent. Was a parent. Yeah. <laughs> but then when I got to high school, it's junior year of high school, I'd walk in late to school every day, eating two packs of Reese's peanut butter cups and a cherry Coke every day. And that's the thing, like, your metabolism was so fast because you were young, you were so scrawny, you were living on sugar and it was fine, but well, even when we started dating, do you even remember how many Cokes you would go through in a day? It was gallons. Yeah, so when we would go to a restaurant, you would refill like four, five, six times. Right before I decided that Coke was bad when I had to when I had to cut it. I went with a couple of friends to the first street restaurant. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And we sat there and ate lunch. And I mean, we were there for probably an hour, and mm. I I must have had four refills of like eating. twenty ounces of Coke each time. Yeah. Got in my van, and I'm like, fuck, I need a Coke. And I drove straight to Seven Eleven, and I got a Coke. And that was right at the point when I was like, this is a problem. I shouldn't have just finished 80 ounces, <laughs> three quarters of a gallon of, of Coke, and then go and need a Coke. And, and it wasn't too much longer after that that I was like, yeah, I gotta cut this out. Yeah. And so I stopped cold turkey and had just a splitting headache for a week. Yeah, that caffeine addiction. And I was driving by the 7-Eleven over there, ran in, got a Coke, took one sip, headache, instantly gone. Probably partially from the caffeine, yeah. partially from the sugar, partially a little bit psychosomatic. psychosomatic. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. But instantly gone. And that was that was it. That was the nail yeah. in the coffin when I was like, I, I have to cut this out. Right before I had Max, I really like evaluated my relationship with food, why I eat what I eat, 
and when I eat what I when when I'm eating and like I dropped I don't even remember I was over 200 pounds in Washington after Caden that was hard I never lost weight after Caden I had preeclampsia and I was huge the day I had him I was almost 230 Jesus yeah I left the hospital under 200 pounds though riddle me that Batman I left the hospital at 190, like 198.9 or something. Well, six pounds, 11 ounces of that was a baby. Yeah, but only six pounds, <laughs> 11 ounces was a baby. I'm just tired of being tired. I want to feel, I want to feel better. <laughs> oh, the things I would do for a shake and an order of fries right now. Oh, you wouldn't even believe it. went to the grocery store. So I've been lugging this trailer across town. It's we stocked up on food for when we're liberated on Friday from this stupid diet. It's only like 20 miles. Yeah. Not bad. But when I haven't ridden more than a couple miles with no trailer in a month. True. And it is 84 outside. You lose some, uh, some of your muscle. So I think I may have killed your brother. Sorry. We went for a bike ride and it's one of our normal bike rides. It's our bigger one, like longer one. Um, it's like 16-ish miles. Uh, it was 85 degrees outside and uh, he took water, but now he feels like shit. Um, I just don't think he had enough calories uh, to pull a trailer and go for a almost 16 mile bike ride. So he's laying on our bedroom floor in the fetal position feeling like crap because his stomach hurts. How about you go drink your Gatorade? Mm -mm. Maybe you need to eat something and drink something. You gotta be hydrated. You haven't had enough calories, that's why you feel like shit today. Yep, gotta have that salt. We live on salt. Even the food doesn't matter as much. I mean, the whole week of so few calories. That might be a bit much for a 16 mile bike ride. On day seven it says, uh, cook one and a third pounds of brown rice and eat a third of the rice at each meal along with any of the vegetables plus the soup. This is getting to be like the 12 days of Christmas. Yeah. And a big bowl of cabbage soup. If you want to use a local dressing on the vegetables, you may do so. What is a local dressing? Maybe something made locally, not like a craft. A I don't know. A local dressing? Why would you? So as I'm sitting here working on this video and I've watched this clip for about the hundredth time, I finally figured out <laughs> that <laughs> it's a low cal dressing, low calorie, not local. But in my defense, look how T Roy <laughs> spelled low cal in his description. See? <laughs> Who's the asshole now? You didn't get it either. I didn't! <laughs> and that's why it's so funny! Okay. Nonpartisan. Give it a read. If you want to use a local dressing on the vegetables, you may do so. <laughs> Every single day we were on the diet, I read local dressing. And like, while I was showing the video to your mom just now, it suddenly clicked. It's a low cal dressing. Low oh my God. <laughs> so it's not just me. It's the last day. I'm so excited. I'm done. This is, I am so, I'm more than done. I've never felt more full. I don't like being overly full. I, it makes me uncomfortable. My body hurts. Like my belly has hurt for days. I'm glad we did it. 
because it's made us think a lot about how we want to go forward from here, how we want to treat our bodies, how, the food we want to eat, how much exercise we think we should get. I'm almost 40, Richard's over 40, so like we really need to be conscious of what we're putting in our bodies and what we, how we're treating it, because I want this to last a lot longer, and it's already fallen apart as it, as it is. Looks like Rice Krispie Treats. But it's not. God, I wish it was though. All right, let's start choking down some rice. <laughs> okay. You didn't even try it without salsa. I know what plain rice tastes like. Oh my God. I'm not looking forward to this. This is gonna fill me up for the day. Yeah. At least it's the last day. All right. Hey, let's do cheers. Sure. How do you feel today? Normal. Better than yesterday afternoon? No, anyways? I feel normal. Oh. Like, the last two days I felt really good. Oh. I feel normal. Like how you normally do after working and being super dehydrated. This right here, you had no color to your face. That's how I knew you weren't just fucking with me. Like. I thought you were just being a brat and you didn't want to eat dinner. But then when I looked at your skin, I'm like, holy shit, you are <laughs> tasty as... Okay, how about another Gatorade? I'm not gonna eat anymore? Nope. I'm full. There's no possible way I could eat all this without throwing up. Dang. Like, I am stuffed. Yeah. I feel like I just ate Thanksgiving dinner. It's time to go take a nap. And you love food. I love good food. Oh, I'm just so... Excited for tomorrow. For tomorrow, <laughs> it's our last night of the diet, and our last meal is gonna be grilled veggies with rice, of course. Have to have the rice. Mmm, look at all them grilled veggies. Doesn't that look good? Some onions, peppers, zucchinis, asparagus. Mmm, it's gonna be good, but not as good as the pizza we're gonna nosh on tomorrow night. I cannot wait. Mm, cheers to our last meal on this diet. Mm. Oh, wouldn't that suck if this was our last meal? Why you gotta say that? That would be shitty. I mean, it tastes good though. I guarantee you, no one on death row ever ordered this for their last meal. Uh-uh. No. I'm looking forward to ending this diet because I'm tired of thinking about this diet. Yeah. And thinking about the food all the time. I know. I know. I've never thought about food so much except right? for these last seven days. So, if you had to do this again, would you? No. Why? Mm. It's stupid. What about it is stupid? People do it for a quick weight loss. They want to drop weight quickly to go on vacation or for their wedding or whatever. Yeah, I mean, starving yourself while simultaneously shitting your brains out is a surefire way to lose weight quickly. Mm -hmm. And then stressing about whatever event that you're trying to lose the weight for, but, I'm sure. I mean, if you just maintain yeah. throughout the course of the year, then you wouldn't have to do stupid shit like this. Yeah. I mean, like we're ones to talk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's why I can say it. <laughs> to be fair, everything was just fine. I fit into all my pants before... Before quarantine. The diet is over. This is the final weigh-in. It's the final weigh-in. Whatever happens here today will go on our permanent records. I don't want to permanently weigh this. You ready? Yeah. All right, step on up. Mm. Okay. What's wrong? It's only eight pounds, barely. Eight? Not, well, almost eight pounds. I don't think it was worth it for that. <laughs> I agree. 
That's a pound a day. More than a pound a day. But it sucked. Ready? Nine. Aww. Nine and a half. It should come as no surprise by now how we felt about this diet. Spoilers. It sucked. <laughs> you know what doesn't suck? Nachos. And champagne. It wasn't all bad because in the course of this week, through this experience, I learned a whole lot about myself. Mm -hmm. And what more can you ask for from any experience in life than to grow from it? Right. My big takeaway from it, just how much joy I get from food and how I, I use it to cope with things mm -hmm. and, and not even like major things like, you know, major traumas or anything like that. Just, eh, just feeling a little uh, yeah. ennui. <laughs> I'm going to eat, you know? I guess it, it was just coincidence that we happened to start watching Hoarders mm -hmm. while we were on this diet and realizing you know that they're in the same situation it's they get joy from buying things and and they get that endorphin. having stuff and it doesn't matter if it's food or what, what it is it's it. just habit it becomes autopilot yeah. that was really really eye-opening for me to just understand that the you know the things that we do because we think they make us happy are 99 percent habit that's good the most interesting thing about the diet and it's a uh, unintended consequences or uh, side unintended side effects is that I feel like shit all, all the, the time. time. And my whole body feels like I'm just coated with tar. It's just, just this a thick, weighing I, can, down. I can feel it in my brain and uh, it's, it, I just feel gross and miserable all the time and I have for my whole life, as long and as I can remember. It's not just physically, like it's mentally. It's a whole, mm -hmm. it's the whole the shebang. Whole thing. Yeah. On day five, I woke up, it was like a quarter to six, and I felt better than I have ever felt in my entire life. The whole day, I felt incredible. And on Wednesday, I woke up again and I felt incredible. I mean, I've never felt this good before. And it wasn't even that I felt like, like, good like I was high or anything like that I just felt good yeah. I just felt healthy and yeah. and I was awake I was alert I didn't feel groggy I didn't wasn't dragging on days five and six I felt like a million dollars until I made you go on a bike ride <laughs> and then we went on a 20 mile bike ride yeah and I was pulling a trailer yeah and, and it was substantial weight I, I mean... and I was sweating and I had no calories in me yeah and I was severely dehydrated oh my gosh. and I wanted to die and when we came home, I, I was shaking. My legs were shaking. Yeah. They were all jelly and everything. And I came home and I pounded a Gatorade. Yes, I broke the diet. Yeah. For medical reasons. I woke up on Thursday and... The last day of the diet. Obviously, I didn't feel yeah. well. And I certainly didn't feel anything like I did the previous two days. Yeah. And then Friday rolls around. I had a bagel for breakfast. I had pizza for dinner. And then on Saturday... I had a bagel for breakfast. I had a pizza bagel for lunch, and I had chicken nuggets. I know breaded chicken nuggets. I know, and yeah, for dinner on Saturday. I know. I didn't and, feel very good, so I didn't want to cook. I feel bad. And so, it started to occur to me that I feel like shit again. So, what has changed? Gluten. Yeah, bread, gluten, and so now I I am pretty convinced that I have a sensitivity to wheat yeah. or gluten, whatever it is, it runs in the family. It runs in the family. Like it, it's uh, not celiac, but definitely a gluten intolerance or a gluten allergy. Something. So if I have come out of this with the recipe for feeling yeah. better, it, it'll, it's worth it'll it. all be worth it. I learned a lot about myself yeah. in the course of the past week. 
Did you learn anything? Um, or is this just about you? Is this just <laughs> par for the course for you? Because you're always doing weird diets. Yeah, like I'm, I'm a girl. That's just what I do. I didn't really learn anything with this because I did that journey years ago. It was more of a, a wake up call of you can't let yourself go down that road again. You've already been there. You already know this is a bad path. And if you continue this way, you're going to be back up 180, 190, 200. This definitely was better to have somebody to talk to. I know you were wanting to stop at multiple times and you kept going, do you want to stop? Are we going to stop? And I'm like, no, we need to see this through. We need to just follow through. We need to finish. I don't think you would have stopped even if I had said, let's stop. Um, but it was something completely different than I've ever done before in my 37 years of existence. I've never dieted with somebody. Yeah, hey, you've done, you've done challenges with other Oh, I've done challenges. Oh, because I am competitive as fuck. And it was really hard every day he'd get on the scale and he would lose more weight, even though I know and I knew and I called it that you would lose more weight. That was difficult for me to see him losing weight and being what I associated with winning, if you will, like he was beating me. <laughs> um, that was hard for me. And I had to take a step back and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that he's winning. It's that you had more body mass to lose than me. And that's just the way it is. That means we're out of time. Yeah, we're done. so weird to, that we starved ourselves for the first four days and then gorged ourselves for three days. It's like we were being like prepared for something. <laughs> Our livers will be flogged you know? lately. Our next.